Hi there, I'm Black Bright broadcasting out the UK and uh, this this video is about how, um, not why returnees die or why they are killed. Um, somebody sent me a video, not a video, somebody sent me an email and they asked me to talk about it. You know, a lot of times we make assumptions when returnees um, die in Jamaica. We just say, oh, it's because Jamaica is violent. It's because, um, you know, the people are sick. They're desperate. And we make all kinds of excuses as to why returnees are killed. And she, she's she been on the island. She's also knows a lot of people who've returned to Jamaica. Some of them successfully have lived there for years. And some like the Gales, um, not the Gales, what's her name again? Charlie and Gail Anderson. They, um, they were brutally murdered. And people kind of say, well, how come some people live in Jamaica and they're safe? while other people go to Jamaica and they, they're killed. And believe it or not, it could be something quite simple. I'm not saying it's the answer to every returnee's prayers, but we have to remember that when people from the Western country, whether it's the UK, USA or Canada, return to Jamaica, the perception is, is that they have money. These people that come back with money, they might have enough to get them through. They know they're getting their little pension, but they're still getting more than the indigenous people. So when these people go back to Jamaica to set up a life, and then the indigenous people see them with their big house, and it's in the middle of a, you know, a place where they haven't got houses like that. Supposing it's like, it's like you're building a big house in a tenement yard you're going to stick out like a store, sore thumb. If you've got workers, um, if you have people that work for you and you don't pay them a decent wage, but yet you're living the life of Riley, that doesn't look good. So it's about, you know, um, kind of covering your back, really. It's about building bridges. It's about when you think... OK, I'm going to go to Jamaica. I'm going to need A, B, C, D and E. You look after the people who are working for you. You pay them a little bit extra. OK, so the um, I think the minimum wage just went up to seven thousand Jamaican dollars. But you can give them, you know, the equivalent in sterling or not in not the equivalent sterling, but you can pay them in sterling, pay them in pounds. Pay them, in pearl and pay them in dollars. You know what I mean? Give them a little extra so you have people who are loyal to you. Because what happens is, if you go on like you are above everyone, you have your big house, you're dissing people, you're giving people the minimum, it's not going to bode well. You know, you're much better off treating people decently with respect, giving them a little extra, earning loyalty, earning respect. It goes a long way. People will talk about you and say, oh, that Mr. Brown, he's so nice. You know, him pay my rent. Him even give me a little extra for the shopping. You know, I don't have to work for the whole year. He's giving me two weeks off of work, you know, so I can go, you know, I can spend time with my children. He's such a nice man every month. Him sends, give me a little extra, you know, twice a year when him go to go back to England or go back to Jamaica and bring me back something. What a lovely gentleman. And it's your reputation that precedes you. However, if you come over and some of these people, they've only been in the States for about not even two months and they come back with this Yankee accent. There is nothing so irritating. Back in the 70s and 80s, we used to have these black guys that used to come over and talk with an American accent. How long have you lived in the States? Oh, I've lived there for a couple of months. And they're coming back with an American accent. So, and it's not even convincing. I was living in the States for 11 years. I don't have an accent. You don't get an accent like that. 
you get an accent if you're born not well not necessarily if you're born but if your formative years from the age say about three to about 11 you've spent in a particular country you're going to develop that accent if you go to a country as a big adult you're not going to develop you're not going to have an accent you're not going to um, speak like them so I don't know where these people are going with their American accent but yeah so you have people like that who have come over with this American accent they go to Jamaica and oh yeah I got a house I got a big house yeah I buy the sea and yeah I got my big car and all that crap those are the type people kill I'm not saying it's good to, I'm not telling them saying it's right to kill them but you know you have to be modest you have to be moderate you don't kind of look up in people's faces and skin up and make out like you're better than other people that's what's going to get people killed and I strongly believe that if you look after people I think I think they will look after you I know there's been situations where that hasn't happened but that could be unfortunate but some people they really set themselves up they really set themselves up to be targets and that's not good so it is just about you know treating people how you would like to be treated and like someone said to me you know our parents when they came to the UK they were earning next to nothing when you think about the slaves who were earning nothing for their labor lucky if they got a couple of you know a couple of pounds of sugar and you can imagine how they felt when they didn't get paid what they felt they were worth so in this big big 20th century pay people what they're worth and you'll get more than enough in return sometimes when you give people a decent salary they'll go over and above for you but when you're there scrimping and scraping they ain't gonna do nothing they're not silly some people they think oh you know they're desperate for the little few shekels they're not desperate for it and they're not going to degrade themselves for it so you might as well pay them a decent salary treat them well don't give if they're living in your home don't give them some you know subordinate substandard um, furniture and a little black and white telly while you have your massive massive big screen I remember when I went to I'm always giving you my little experiences when I first went to the United States and I didn't have a green card I was hustling when I first went there and I got a little temporary job here and a little temporary job there and I remember my sister saying to me um, you know you're gonna have to clean houses because that's how we got out that's how we got sponsored and I'm telling her well I'm not saying that I'm too good to clean houses but that's not really my bag you know what I mean so anyway she took me to this place in um, it's a place called Long Neck I think it's called Long Neck Long Island Long Neck Great Neck I think it was called Great Neck anyway it's in Long Island so she took me to this house and a massive house massive and the ceilings were really high and when you looked up all from the floor to the ceiling and the ceiling was must be about a 16 foot high ceiling it was pure mirrors so she's telling me that I'm gonna have to clean these mirrors and then she's telling me that um, that she has this chute where all everybody puts the clothes and they go down to this chute into the into the basement and then I'm, I'm supposed to pick up all these clothes anyway the thing is is that with the um, the house with the mirrors I said to her how the hell am I supposed to get up and um, clean those mirrors she says you get on a ladder I'm thinking to myself that's what you bloody think and then when you go down into this basement where all of these the whole family are throwing their clothes you know one big pile of clothes and I'm looking at the clothes and I'm, thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself very big bloody lucky anyway that's not even the, that's not even the joke everywhere you've got marble granite big big tv everything you know the house was like a palace you want to see the room where they're putting me in one little digger digger room and when i say it was one little black and white t tv 
and then the cupboard at the TV end was on. The drawers were broken. The door was falling off. It just about enough for a single bed. And it was kind of dismal. And I said to her, um, but where am I supposed to put my computer, my PC? She said, you're not going to have time to use no PC, she said. I said, but I can't even swing a cat in here. She goes, oh, you can go outside and walk outside the basement. I said, I said and, you know, and then when we was going out, she had some nice paintings on the wall. And I said to my sister, oh, those are nice paintings. She goes, oh, you can't look at the paintings. You're not supposed to be looking at the paintings. You come here to work. I said, I ain't bloody working here. I must be joking. I had own business. And it's not that I feel I'm better. But what I'm saying is, is that when you see that kind of circumstance where they are living this lavish, lavish lifestyle and they put you in like, like you're a dog, like a kennel, that's where they expect me to live. Nah, that tells me something about them. And that's what I'm saying with the Jamaicans that, you know, who have home help, who have um, people who come in there and work. Don't treat them like that. Don't treat them like they're dogs, like they're subordinates. You give them, treat them with a degree of respect. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands on their room, but you can make it look nice. You can make it look presentable so that they feel proud. And when they go home, they can say, oh, you know, I've got a lovely little room, you know. The person I'm working for is so nice. I've got a lovely TV. I've got a lovely little dressing table. I've got a lovely bed. Nice clean carpet. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. But when you when you go on like you're a hundred times better than the people who are keeping you, it's like when you go to work and you have the people at the top, the big bosses, and you as an administrator, they treat you like shit. It's like, you know, you're not supposed to mix with anybody. You're not supposed to go to any events. They look down on you as though you're nothing. It's the same principle. And I mean, it's, it, and the thing is, as administrators, we don't look at them and, well, I don't. I don't look at them and feel resentful. But I'm aware of that dynamic. I'm aware of the way they ignore me when they walk past me and only talk to me when they want something. I'm quite aware of that. And I'm not talking about in my current situation, my current job. I'm talking about in jobs I've had in the past where you have this hierarchy. And the thing is, is that when you, um, when you realise, all that tells me is that you're not a very nice person. I don't know who the hell you think you are. And that's what that's how resentment builds up when you're de treating people like that in Jamaica. They're not stupid. The same way people like me are not stupid. Just because we are doing the job that we need to do doesn't mean we're not capable of doing better. Doesn't mean we're not capable of doing more. So don't bother get your, yourself in a high horse and think, oh yeah, just they're cleaning my house. Therefore, they're not, they're not worth anything more than that or they can't do any better. Don't have that, don't have that attitude, that mentality, because it's not always true. Sometimes people are just doing it for a hustle. They're doing it to get extra money. You don't know what they're capable of doing. And so that's why people get murdered when people come over there with this big attitude, like they're top and all, it's like, and they treat people like crap. And then next thing you know, I heard that woman, um, what was her name? The one that had that guy, he was looking after a house for her. And then she decided to um, go and live in the house and kicked him out on the street after he was living in the big house, looking after the house, driving her car and kind of get a reputation of being the big, the big guy. And then she decides that she's going to come over and she wants her house back in, in for Como to know. Not like she's going to give him any salary, not like she's giving him money to tide over, not like she's saying, OK, you've looked after my house. Here's a few grand. This will help you find a place to live. You know, this is a little money. You can you can buy a car. 
So he, even though he stepped out a little station, he hasn't dropped right down to the ground. Well, I'm sorry. Chop up. So is it worth it? It's not worth it. And I'm not saying that happens to all people, but I'm just saying, and I'm not even saying it's a safe, foolproof method for not getting killed as a returnee. But it goes a long way when you treat people with respect, regardless of where they are. You treat people nicely. You give a little bit over and above if you can afford it. And that's all it takes, just a little kindness. So I think, um, let me make sure that I haven't forgotten anything. Like they said, Charlie and Gail Anderson, that they were a mixed race couple. They'd probably be alive if they never went to Jamaica. Um, who else is there? I wanted to get that. Um, oh, maybe I didn't write it down. Yes, what I'm saying is, don't be mean, pay above the minimum wage, give them little gifts now and then. If you can afford to help them with their school fees, do that. Um, and, you know, if you promise people, if you make a promise and tell somebody you're going to do something, just do it. Don't bother, wait till you get there and then say, oh, well, I'm so sorry, we never get to do it, you know. Something come up, we never get to do it. Broken promises, it's not, it's not a nice thing because people are hoping, you know, people live in hope and they're trusting on that promise. I saw this joke one where this um, woman, this man or this woman promised her a barrel and the woman was waiting for the barrel, waiting for the barrel and the barrel never come and she'd call in and call in and the people say, yeah, the barrel coming, man, the barrel coming and the barrel never came. You know, those are the kind of things that build resentment. You don't want anybody to have any resentful feelings, especially if you plan to go and live in Jamaica, or not even just Jamaica, anywhere. These rules apply to anywhere in the world. Just treat people with respect. Treat people as you would like to be treated. And that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.